Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Thanks for checking out this video. My name is Chris. We talk all about koi ponds and water gardens and waterfalls and pond filtration and fish and aquatic plants and the whole bit here on this channel. Um, I've got a ton of information for you guys on a whole mess of videos. So if you're new to the channel, you know, please check out the videos. Um, again, there's a lot of helpful information here for you. And hopefully you can find something of interest to you. And um, you know, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel I, I definitely appreciate the support and for those of you that are subscribers to my channel again thank you very much um, and I hope I can continue to give you guys some good videos with uh, a lot of helpful information all right, so today's topic, we are gonna talk about parasites. All right, many different types of parasites that can be found in a pond. Um, <laughs> There's basically two different types of parasites we're gonna look at today. One is called protozoan parasites, which are tiny microscopic parasites. And then the other um, type of parasites are larger parasites that can be easily visibly seen on your fish. So we're gonna talk briefly about each different kind, a few different things, and um, how to um, treat the pond as well to eliminate these parasites, okay? So a couple of things we need to understand first, okay? Um, no matter what type of parasite it is, um, the parasites um, have a life cycle, okay? So treating a parasite um, one day is not gonna work, all right? We need to keep the treatment in the water for sometimes weeks, okay? Um, depending, mostly depending upon the water temperature. So in the early spring or in the winter when the water's really cold, uh, the life cycle of the parasite is slowed down greatly, okay? So a typical life cycle of the parasite going from um, an egg to a larva to an adult to laying the eggs again, okay? Sometimes in cold water can take weeks. Whereas in the summer, in warm water, all right, that same parasite's life cycle, instead of being weeks, can be days. All right, so if the life cycle is increased in warm water to days, if you get a parasite infection in the summer, okay, that means that the amount of parasites that you can get in a short period of time is huge. Okay, and your fish can be affected by it greatly. Now, there's um, a layer of what we call like a slime coat on the fish's um, surface, on their skin, right, on top of their scales. That slime coat is a protective coating that helps um, protect them from different pathogens in the water, okay? Um, parasites, bacteria, fungi, things like this. There are um, you know, different kinds of protein cells and, and all their um, ability to fight infection um, is in that slime coat. Now, a lot of times on, on the market, you'll see um, products called you know, like a stress coat, stress reliever, okay? And it usually, uh, you know, contains a, a something like aloe that is kind of slimy, right? So the idea is, you know, if your fish are stressed, they're gonna lose that slime coat, okay? And by putting this stuff in the water, you know, aloe or whatever it contains, you know, will put that slime coat back on the fish. And in part, that's correct. It does kind of help to put that slime coat on the fish. The problem is the slime coat that you're putting on them from that bottle does not contain all the natural antibodies and, and, and cells that help the fish to naturally fight infection, okay, as their natural slime coat does. So when the fish lose that slime coat, they become more susceptible to these parasites. Once a parasite opens a wound, um, you know, or an open um, sore lesion on the fish, then that open wound is now susceptible to bacterial infections and fungi, okay? So there's a lot of problems that can cas cascade, <laughs> okay, um, from having parasites on your fish, right? So 
The first type of parasites that I want to talk about briefly are what's um, called the protozoan parasites. They are basically microscopic. They're tiny, okay? We need a, a microscope like this to identify them. Now, years ago, I did take a class um, on identifying parasites on your pond fish. And um, what we had done is the, the, the guy who ran the, the seminar ended up going to a big um, national um, pet shop <laughs> and buying um, a whole bunch of goldfish. He brought those goldfish back. We did little scrapings on the goldfish, okay? We put those little scrapings on a, on a microscope slide, put them on our, our microscope, and I gotta say, we probably identified just about every parasite in the book um, on these fish from your pet shop. So, uh, <laughs> all right, you always have to be careful, you know, when introducing new fish. And um, if you need a little help with that, a little advice with that, I have another video about that um, here on the channel you might want to check out but um, again we found a lot of parasites on these fish so they're pretty common they're very common um, occurrences in a pond if we can keep our fish healthy and strong and their immune systems healthy and strong okay um, the chances that these parasite infections in the pond on your fish are greatly decreased all right it's when the fish are stressed when it's really cold out and their immune system their metabolism is slow and things they start to become more susceptible all right um, okay so <laughs> protozoan parasites um, so many different kinds that are very common they all are fundamentally very very similar all right um, ick is one of the most common ones, okay? If you're a fish keeper, eventually you're gonna run into ick somewhere, somehow, some way, okay? Um, ick, costia, trichodina, chilodinella is a really big one. Um, um, those are definitely very common, all right? And basically, again, they're microscopic. You're not really gonna see these things on your fish uh, very easily. Now, ick is really common because what it does basically is it burrows under the outer surface of the skin of the fish and it forms a cyst under the, under the skin, okay? These cysts are visible um, to the naked eye, all right? They look like little white spots on the fish. It almost looks like you took a little like white pencil <laughs> And, and poke that fish, okay? It could be on the fins, it can just be all over them, okay? These cysts end up um, breaking out, all right? Coming to the bottom of the pond, um, it's full of eggs, all right? The eggs um, hatch. We have free flowing swimming larva. The larva attaches to the hosts, okay? burrows under the skin, forms the cyst, lays the eggs, okay? It's this whole life cycle that goes on and on and on, all right? Um, all these parasites, these protozoan parasites are all very similar, okay? They, you know, they lay the eggs, <laughs> the eggs hatch, the, the larvae are free swimming, the larvae attach to a host, and start the process all over, okay? So for that reason, okay, again, we can't treat these parasites, you know, in one treatment. They have to go over the life cycle of the, of the parasite, all right? So in other words, probably the easiest time to kill them is either when they're in their adult stage or their larva stage. If it's in their egg stage, right, the, the, the medicine um, you know, that we put in, the chemicals that we put in the pond is not gonna have much of an effect, okay? So we need to make sure that after we treat, whatever hatches later can still be affected by the treatment in the water, all right? So we have to go through this whole cycle. Now, like I said, if it's cold water, that cycle can take weeks, all right? Warm water, 
few days, maybe three, four, five days, and 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 they, you know, their life cycle is complete. So it's definitely um, a little bit um, different as far as treatment. Now, there are many different types of chemical uh, treatments for parasites that are out there. Some of these chemical treatments can be. Um, expensive, okay, um, only because, again, we can't treat one day. We have to treat multiple times, sometimes for so a couple weeks, okay? So we need to buy the product over and over again, okay? Multiples of the product sometimes. One bottle may not be enough, all right? Um, sometimes these uh, products can have effects on other parts of our pond. Sometimes our filtration system, sometimes the aeration in the pond it can be uh, a, whole, a whole process. So whatever product you are purchasing that's recommended to you at the store, um, please read the directions on that bottle and follow those directions carefully, okay? Otherwise, um, it, it can hurt the fish more, okay, especially if these things are overdosed. Um, and then it could not solve your problem if we don't treat it long enough or, or at the right amount, okay. Um, now, all these protozoan parasites can also be killed easily by using salt, okay. Um, much more, at least for me, a much more... Um, <laughs> appropriate way to attack parasites and kill them, all right? Very easy and cheap, <laughs> okay? Um, I have a whole nother video on using salt in your pond that explains how much, how long, how many, a whole bit, okay? Um, please check that out. I don't want to go into great detail on that here because I'll be here for another half hour. So um, <clears throat> check out that video on salt and that'll explain to you how um, to treat you know, your pond with the salt. Um, so yeah, the protozoan parasites can be killed easily with salt, but the whole trick to that is sometimes a lot of pond keepers keep a um, salt level in their pond all the time. Okay, if that's the case and we still get a parasite, that means those parasites are immune to the salt. And sometimes then we have to resort to those chemical measures to um, kill the parasites, which can be, like I said, more expensive and more difficult, okay? So um, there's pros and cons of using salt. Uh, again, I explain all that in the other video. Um, but just know that if your pond is not um, treated with salt on a regular basis, then if you do have these parasites in your pond, it is easily killed and easily controlled, okay? All right, um, there's another parasite that's pretty common and it's called epistylus. Um, this is basically a parasite that is very often confused with a fungus. All right, um, you, what happens is <laughs> it opens up a sore on the fish and you will see like almost white hairy tufts on those sores. Um, and that's often misdiagnosed um, as being a fungus, all right, when it's actually a parasite. Um, fungus are, um, is usually very rare to get on a fish, truly. Um, and it's usually never something that's um, on its own, okay? A fungus is usually something that is secondary to a parasite, okay? The parasite opens the wound and then a fungus can um, grow and evolve off of that wound. Um, same thing with bacteria, okay? Um, the parasites are usually the ones that are opening the skin, creating those ulcers, creating those sores, and then the bacteria and the fungi can get in, okay? But this epistylus is usually, you know, right away confused as being a fungus. So sometimes people will go to the store and say, you know, I got these, you know, looks like, you know, puffy cotton things on my fish. I need a fungicide. And then they treat it with the fungicide and it's not helping. Well, that's because it's a parasite, okay? 
Um, so definitely um, something you know to be aware of in, with that. Now, um, another common parasite is what's called gill flukes, okay, flukes. A um, couple different types of flukes, actually there's a lot of different types of flukes, but gill flukes are very common. So they are a little bit larger, okay, than the protozoan parasites, and therefore the salt is not going to be effective on them, all right. They grow in the gills, okay. They lay their eggs the, the, as the fish breathes, okay, and it's pushing the air, I'm sorry, the water <laughs> through the gills, it's flushing out the eggs, okay. As the eggs um, come out, they fall to the pond, the bottom of the pond, they hatch, okay. The larvae are free swimming and look for more hosts. They get back into the gills, they lay more eggs, and the process goes on and on and on, all right? Um, gill flukes um, need to be treated chemically, okay? Um, and, <laughs> you know, they're actually pretty common as well, all right? So um, another, another parasite that we need to be aware of. Um, after that, let's get into larger parasites, things that are really going to be visible, that you're going to walk out to your pond and you're going to look at your fish and say, oh, what's that? Okay. All right. Anchor worm. All right. Anchor worm is, <laughs> looks like a little thread that hangs off of your fish. They attach to the body and then you know it looks like a little white thread that hangs off the fish they can grow on the tails they can grow on on the sides of the fish anywhere all right but you will notice that um, they look like little strings on the fish all right um, the next parasite is called a fish lice uh, these things kind of freak me out. <laughs> They're actually pretty, pretty gross. Um, they look like little green discs that um, live on the skin on the outer surface of the fish. And they crawl all over the fish and they have like a mouth and they, they open up a hole and they suck the blood out of the fish. Um, these things are, are really pretty gross, and I've seen fish that are just covered with them. Um, the problem with the fish lice is that many, many times they are, when they are in their like larval stage, when they are very you know, young, they are extremely small and you can't see them. So you can have a bunch of these things in your pond, all right, on your fish, and you can't visibly see it. But a big sign that you may have fish lice is to see the fish flashing. And what that means is the fish will be swimming around and he'll come to the side of the pond or the bottom of the pond and, and he'll you know, scrape their side and they swim, okay? Because they're irritated on the side of their body and they scrape their side of their body on, on the bottom of the pond or the pond line or whatever. Okay, so if you start seeing them flashing like that, that could be a sign that you have fish lice. Um, you know, once those fish lice grow and become adults, um, you definitely visibly see them on the fish. Okay, um, <laughs> yeah, so anchor worm and fish lice, being that they're much larger parasites, okay require some pretty toxic chemicals to kill and control them. Um, it's, it's not something that salt is going to affect, all right? The salt will not affect them. Um, it's definitely going to be a chemical. And some of these, you know, chemicals, again, you know, can be more expensive and they need to be treated for a long period of time, uh, sometimes a couple weeks. So, um, it's definitely something um, to look out for, okay, and be aware of in your pond. Um, parasites are natural, all right? They're natural things. They, they're going to occur in a pond. Um, keeping your pond clean is definitely an advantage, all right? Um, sometimes uh, water quality 
and the overall uh, water chemistry, the, the cleanliness of the pond, as much as organic, you know, debris rotting and decaying in the pond, all this stuff adds to um, providing a beneficial place for these parasites to grow and, and <laughs> thrive, okay? So <laughs> we want to keep our ponds nice and clean. Um, yeah, the fish lice are very common. They lay their eggs, okay, in the substrate. They lay their eggs in the rock and gravel, in the sludge and the muck and the debris in the bottom of the pond. So keeping our ponds clean, having bottom drains and no rock in the pond is definitely a benefit. Um, but they lay their eggs in the substrate the eggs hatch, the larvas are free swimming, they attach to the fish, the host, and then they grow and grow and grow and grow and then lay more eggs, okay? So um, definitely, um, you know, can cause a lot of problems, okay? So a lot of times these parasites are not what's going to kill your fish. Some of these parasites definitely can kill your fish, but a lot of times it's not what will kill the fish, it's what opens the wound to bacteria and fungus that can kill the fish, especially different types of bacteria can be really bad. All right, so if you start to see, you know, um, your fish flashing, if you have, see little sores or little white spots on your fish, um, and you're not treating your pond with salt, put some salt in, okay? Um, it's definitely gonna help. And, you know, I've, I've helped um, people over the years that have had, you know, ick and some parasite infections that, you know, I just put some salt in the pond and man, it wipes it right out and, and within no time, everything is great and happy and healthy again. So um, definitely check out that video on the salt as well. All right. Okay, so I just want to give you a little roundup of, of some different types of parasites and some ideas and things to be aware of in your pond, okay? And some uh, ideas on how to treat it. And, um, you know, thanks for watching. I, I hope it helped you out a little bit. And again, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and uh, hopefully we'll see you back again in another video. Take care. Bye.